Hi, I'm Paul Brody. I'm here with Mitch. He's behind the camera and this is my shop. Today we're making a pair of, of clip-on handlebars for my little Aramac eraser and I've got a bunch of steel here. This is, is chrome molly and it's going to get welded onto this tube. This tube first has to be ovalized so we're going to do that in the arbor press and then that gets bolted onto the clamp tube, gets welded onto the clamp tube and this is going to be at an angle of 10 degrees. Then there's the pinch lugs. The pinch lugs get brazed onto that. So we're going to use a hacksaw, a lathe, a milling machine, oxyacetylene, antique welder. That's what we're doing. got half inch steel here. This is just cold rolled steel, nothing fancy. I'm going to make a pinch lug out of this and I can buy pinch lugs but it's more fun to make your own and I'm pretty fussy too so I think I make a little nicer pinch lug than what I can buy. So I need to face the end and I got to drill some holes of different sizes. <laughs> So now I've got a, a six millimeter drill and I don't know if you can see, can you see there's a little felt pen mark right there that tells me how far in I'm going to go. I'm going to go halfway through the pinch lug and it'll let the six mil Allen, Allen screw go in and then start to thread. Now I've got a special drill which I've, I've modified. Can you, I don't know if you want to zoom in on that. And you can see how this is six mil here. And so this is the right size for the head of the Allen screw. It's a countersunk tool and I don't need to hold it in the lathe or anything. I can just hold it with my hand and I can just press and you can see that I've made a nice little champ from the inside there. I feed down nice and slowly. So there we go. We have four of the pinch lugs and they're all notched out. All, all mitered to so it fits on the clamp too. Okay, there comes the chip. Can you see the chip in the bottom as it comes through? That's what the tap's doing. It's forcing the chip down the bottom. And that's tapped. I've got my TIG torch, I've got a, a 16th inch, inch tungsten here, I've got a rod, it's a, off a MIG spool, it's 035 rod, so I want to just put a tiny little, little TIG tack right there. I'm just eyeballing how far down the pinch lug is, I'm not actually measuring. It also helps if you take a pair of side cutters and if you cut off the very end of the rod, it just makes a nice, it's a clean start on the rod. Okay, we are tapped. So they have to be have to be uh, a braze now. I'll say nickel silver because that's the rod I'm going to use. And 
it's it's tig tacked on the outside so what I'm going to do is to heat up the inside and I'll start on the inside because there's no sense starting here on the outside if the inside isn't held. We're going to put some flux on here. It's a type B paste flux from the it's from the gas flux company El Rio, Ohio. Somehow I always remember that. And this protects the metal a little bit and it also helps the nickel silver to flow. So that's why we put it on there. I'm going to wear some gloves, safety third. Add some oxygen, want that neutral flame. A little bit of preheat. I've got a 1 16th nickel silver rod in my left hand. It's, uh, I think it's also called a 773 rod. It, it's very strong for what it is and it flows quite nicely. If you feel it brazing, it's not a good thing to use because it doesn't have the kind of, of characteristics you need when you build up a lot of metal. But it's very good for small brazons, especially ones that have to be strong, like a pinch lug, a brake boss, things like that. That's one done. Gets pretty hot, doesn't it? You can see the red. Okay, round two. Acetylene first, oxygen second. So on these extension tubes, we want the whole thing to be overlized. We want to overlize it equally. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the tube in the middle like that. And I'm going to put some plates on each end. Got one plate here. And that's a three quarter inch plate. So is this one. This is an inch tube and I, I, I want to take it down a little less than 7 eighths, which is the OD of the handlebar. So this is 3 quarters. So what I'm going to do is I want to have it a little bit higher. I'll take a little bit of cardboard, put it on each end. I'll use one of these. So this is a little heavier tube, so it's going to take a little bit more force. It's not going to work like that, so we need a spacer by this. There we go, that can work. <laughs> Let me put some more leverage on this thing. It's a chromoly tube, so it's definitely got some strength to it. So I've got this in the right position now. I got a struggling bar, that's what this is. It, it adds leverage onto the there we go. So that's squished. So take all the plates off. Let me just do the second one now. There we go. Having the spaces on each end, what that means is that is that both of these tubes now are overlized exactly the same. It's not like one's the size and the other one's a little, little bit different. They're both exactly the same. Like so. Fish mouse. 
I'm going to put uh, a tic tac on this side and then I'll put a tic tac on the other side. I'll do the second one and then weld right around. I haven't TIG welded for a while, so we'll see how I do. That was stressful. In the in the center of the tube is is zero, so I've offset it 3.135. So what I'm gonna do is, and that's why I got so much writing on here. I just take a felt pen, I write it on the vise or the table. You can see all the scribbles here. And when I do the other side, I put the extension tube out the other way and I go to the same. That means that each of these tubes is going to be the same. One left and one right. I've soaked these in hot water and, and that takes off the flux and then what we're left with is a little bit of, of blackness from the heat. So I think what I'd like to do now is to have them in the bead blaster and, and just take that off a little bit and just clean them up a little bit because that's the easiest stage to do that right now. After bead blasting, you can see what it looks like. It's a lot cleaner. You can see if there's any little lumps. I've got a little, see a little spot there. I need to, I need, I need to file off that little bit of braise there. Sloppy. But aside from that, it looks okay. I'm just gonna hold this by hand and I'll put a little fusion tack there. That's what I'm gonna do because I don't really have any way I can, I can, I can clamp this onto that. So all that is, is just like a little fusion tack. I didn't use a rod, I just melted one piece onto the other. So I'll take it out carefully because it's not held by much and then I'll use the rod and I'll put a tack on the other side. One last look to make sure everything is symmetrical. And we got the pinch lugs on the outside. We don't have pinch lug outside, pinch lug inside. That wouldn't be good. So I think we're going to weld them up now. It's nice welding chromoly. And, and also seamless. Do you see how it's got a shine to it? If your weld has a shine to it, that's usually a good sign.
and that's all it does. It make, can you see that in the light? It makes a, a pretty nice job. It just takes off the burrs. <laughs> And there's my handlebars. Thank you for watching. Maybe next time.